Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp and listen, mister, how are you fixed for a play? Good afternoon and welcome to CPA Christ Presbyterian Academy here on the campus at 2323 Old Hickory Boulevard in Nashville for today's broadcast of 40s Day put on by the 8th grade students here at the academy. We're going to use an ordinary garden variety peach with its short, close fuzz and tender skin and a regular regimental hairbrush with its rough, tough bristles to prove to you that the man-sized Remington electric shaver will give you a close, comfortable shave, no matter how tender your skin, no matter how tough your beard. Look at this amazing demonstration. The Remington is so gentle that it can shave the short, close fuzz off a peach without harming its tender skin. And the Remington is so powerful that it can shave the bristles off a brush, bristles tougher than any beard. Remember the amazing demonstration of the peach and brush. For the close, comfortable shave you've always wanted, reach for the Remington electric shaver. Pee Wee Reese has a way with Dodger rookies or Sandlot youngsters. Pee Wee, you do a lot of work with boys. Not work, Al. I like baseball and kids. I enjoy helping teenagers start right. Well, that's around shaving age. And you give them pointers on personal appearance, too? Yes. A boy has more self-respect when he's clean shaved. I tell him to use a Gillette razor, Al. You said it. The Gillette Super Speed Razor. And today there are three. Light for sensitive skin and most younger men. Regular for average skin and beard. Heavy for men who and like the heft and feel of a heavier razor. Each is because different, precisely Renaissance engineered. Festival, One has the right blade edge exposure, edge like angle, and weight to shave you in a breeze. Comfortable, good-looking shaves you may never have had before. And convenient, you change blades and rinse clean, so. Choose your Gillette Super Speed Razor. $1.29 with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser in handy travel case. Now what? Now let's check the second message. Ready. Mum, the doctor's deodorant discovery now contains M3. Got that? M3 to stop odor 24 hours a day. Remember now. I know. For security reasons, mum's the word. New mum cream deodorant now with M3. Got the message? Susie Q, what's cooking with you? Your teeth look whiter than no, no, no. My teeth aren't new, but my toothpaste is new Pepsodent. Get with it, kids. New package, new flavor, new formula, too, means brighter smile for me and you. You'll, You'll wonder, wonder where, where the, the yellow went, went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. The new formula with IMP gets teeth much whiter. You can see it cleans the stains and film away while Irium fights tooth decay. You'll wonder wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. The taste is new, so fresh and clean. That new taste really lasts, it's keen. And while it makes your smile a rave, it also makes your breath behave. So start going steady right away with Pepsodent. Get some today. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. 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 Back with you here on the broadcast of 40s Day. Hope you can hear us and see us. I want to thank all the grandparents, uncles, aunts, extended family members who are tuning in for the broadcast this afternoon. This is Phil Newman. I serve as director of communications here at the Academy. The program is uh, 
oh, a few minutes away from starting, a little bit later than we initially thought. The email that went out said, I think, 12.25 for the broadcast time. Now it's about 12.35, and lunch is, is going on down below. You can see our, there's the stage, and now we look to see the uh, lunch line right there and some of the decorations all around the event center here at the academy and students wearing there's a baseball player right there see students wearing different uniforms to uh, honor the decade of the 1940s that storied era in american history in world war ii today's program is basically called 40s day cpa and the uso you see some films being shown from that era and it's going to be CPA and the USO supporting our troops wherever they are until they come home. These are the eighth grade students of CPA bringing you this beautiful program led by, well, faculty. Mrs. Rhonda Smith, our middle school principal, heads up the whole operation. And then there's Kay Reed and Carrie Jennings are the stage program directors. Outstanding job by Kay and Carrie. Carrie is the musical director as well. We have Lisa Roman as our dance director today. The dance moves you'll see in the... Uh, program were choreographed and uh, led by Mrs. Lisa Roman. Band director Max Fullwider. The band is over to the right. Let's see if I can get a shot of them. Way over there, uh, rehearsing. You can see that, that kind of that, the band area right there. And uh, there they are, getting ready to go. Also. I want to mention uh, Shane Caudill and Kay Reed for the script writers. Great job by Shane and Kay on that front. Damon Chepke is our technical director and running sound and video from the booth today. And Carrie Dinkos is the faculty advisor for 40s Day, and she does a great job as well. Parent chairs. Couldn't do it without the parents. Melissa Hutz and Mindy Anderson, our chairpersons and uh, props coordinators. Uh, big, big thanks to Melissa and Mindy for their leadership of this event. It's been a beautiful job getting the uh, event center all decorated and arranging all the uh, table decorations and, and lunch and et cetera. You see some of those just down here for an example. There's one right there, table. And also I want to big, big, give a big thanks to the Bellevue Cruisers for the 1940s convertibles that are outside. Can't see those on camera, of course. They are not in the, in the event, event center. Uh, something cool that's new this year, by the way, before I forget, is the star down here just below. You can see the back of it from here. Right there is a huge star with pictures being taken there. Uh, on the other side, it lights up. It's a uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, thing. I think Jan Huddleston, uh, one of our CPA moms and uh, employees, uh, helped arrange that. And Jan got a big shout-out from Mindy Anderson earlier. Mindy was saying, hey, Jan Huddleston is a go-to, and she is. Jan is fantastic in lots of different areas. So big shout out to Jan as well, one of our stars, if you will. Now, also want to mention uh, Jim Lawson, J.W. Irvin, and Tom Akers from Bellevue Cruisers for those convertibles. And then Carolyn's Catering. Boy, it smells good down there. I'm up in the booth here, and that, the smell of this food is wafting up. And boy, I wish I could get down there and jump down and grab some of that. But it's Carolyn's Cater Catering. Um, providing some of the grub. And then also uh, thanks to Jimmy Gentry. He's been involved in this event too. Our, one of our local World War II heroes, uh, Jimmy Gentry from Franklin. Those who know this area know Mr. Listen, Gentry and his outstanding service to our, our nation in uh, World War II. Where? And, and one of the, he was one of those who helped liberate the, uh, the camps uh, in Germany. So uh, quite, a, quite a story he's got. And then, of course, we want to thank all the men and women of our armed services who have served and are serving our country. That's the whole point of this. One of the whole points is to just uh, say thanks to those who have served us back in the 40s and all the way through today. And that's part of what these students are learning about. So as we get ready for the program here in a few minutes, let's go ahead and go through just all the students who are involved. Now, I apologize in advance if I get anybody's name wrong. But uh, because I don't, no, I don't know all these students uh, as well as uh, I wish I did. But here we go. The mail call cast. It's called. It's the mail call is the show. Basically, you'll see on the stage here. Let me start from the beginning. We'll go all the way through. Applause sign number one will be Gray McCullough, jazz quartet. It's Noah Parker, Luke Zeman, Cole Cooper, and Nathan uh, Goshat. Uh, 
I may have that wrong. The four Vagabonds will be played by Chase uh, Eberbach, uh, Robert Carpenter, Land Teller, and Andrew Howard. The rosy dancers you'll see will be Addie Leonard, Lauren Hutchins, and Emily Enoch. Narrator will be uh, Ryan Dixon, Dickinson, Ryan Dickinson. Tall Tex will be Sam Chambers. Black Bart will be played by Drew Peak. The conductor will be David Bates. Sweet Sally will be Jessica Huddleston. Sound effects artist, Mason Norman. Mother, Carly Sidberry. By the way, each every eighth grader has a role in this uh, production. Uh, Susan will be played by Alyssa Michaeloff. Beverly by Caroline Stanley. Johnny by Jonathan Miller. Davey by Charlie Thorne. General Collins will be played by Jeffrey Serafin. Captain Davis by Bobby Willingham. Private Jenkins will be Drew Scott. The soldiers will be a bunch of guys. Jack Ambrose, Alex Boozer, Jacob Brooks, Lowry Brooks, Jeremiah Cox, Nathan uh, Gauchet, uh, Jackson Madden, Devin McKnight, Noah Parker, Seth Townsend, Andy Waters, Luke Zeman, Bruce Francis, yes, Bruce Francis, and Steve Haywood. Bruce and Steve are two of our faculty members, if you don't know that already. They're big guys of the soldier group. Okay, announcer number one, Philip Clark, Fred Astaire, Owen Keck, Barbara Stanwyck will be played by Mabel Dustin, Walt Disney, played by Daniel Cunningham, Rosemary Clooney will be Glory Guy. Bob Hope will be played by Baker Blevins. General MacArthur will be Carter Atkinson. Groucho, played by James Deaton. Uh, Chico, played by John Robinson. Harpo will be Thomas Key. Judy Garland will be Abigail Woods. Jimmy Stewart will be Jackson Calloway. Clark Gable, played by Brad Smith. Joe Lewis, portrayed by Nicholas Gibson. Joe DiMaggio, by Heath Tyner. The Andrew sisters will be Betsy Ellis, Bailey Oakley, and Maddie Yoder. Catherine Hepburn today will be Elizabeth Ponder. Marlene Dietrich will be Cl Kate Klosner. Rosie the Riveter, Whitney Baker. The factory workers will be Janie Hubbard and Jessica Freeman. Uh, Maddie English will be played by uh, Anna Todd Irvin. Baseball players in the production will be Grace Campbell and Maddie Clay. Jackie uh, Cochran will be uh, played by Savannah Legate. The Wasps will be Isabella uh, Drucker and Libby Green. Uh, Milford McAfee will be played by Emily Carpenter. The Waves will be Ali Hockaday, Graham Jackson, and Sierra Stout. Oh, uh, Ovita Culp Hobby uh, will be Ellie Boster. Uh, the, uh, the Wax will be uh, Miranda Houck and Jordan Kelly. Ruby Bradley, played by Emma Grace Barton. Nurses will be portrayed. I saw the nurses earlier in the cafeteria line. They'll be portrayed by Carly Joe Kickert. Uh, Grace Reynolds and uh, Megan Snodgrass. The Boswell sisters will be uh, Ann Florence Brown, Anna uh, Kutzko, and Joy Jamison. Applause, applause sign number two, I should say, will be Philip Clark. Announcer number two will be Gray McCullough. Danny Kay will be Jay Perry. Rita Hayworth will be uh, played by Lauren Pashley. Abbott, Elias Hawley. Costello, Will Peters. Betty Davis today played by A.J. Thomas. Uh, June by Avery Woods. Jenny by Anna uh, Avenger. James by Cooper Reynolds. Frank Sinatra by Penn, Ben Pate. Uh, Lauren Bacall will be played by Baylor Burt. Humphrey Bogart by Justin Condodorio. Rudd Rogers by Luke Ellis. Dale Evans by Anna Carpenter. Housewife, Grace Conwell. Factory worker, Grace Bailey. Secretary, uh, Marissa Mingle. Nurse, Colette Miller. Seamstress, Hope Wells. Teacher, Sarah Crace. Uh, Glenn Miller dancers will be Rachel Anderson, Keaton Carr, Hannah Cummings, Jack Edgel, JT Gilbert, Mary Marguerite Hall, Madison Hutz, Jackson Isaacs, Michael Marinick, and Mackenzie Terrell. Uh, maybe Terrell, I'm sorry about that. Bing Crosby will be Wilson Smith. The Girlfriends, played by Maggie Smith, Rachel Whitaker, and Natalie Welch. President Roosevelt today will be Noah Meyer. Ethel Merman, played by Mackenzie Roberts. Ethel's Friends by Caitlin Payne and Ashley Williams. Dinah Shore by Sydney Carr. And last but not least, the video montage will be Will Peters. There you have it. That's the entire cast and crew of 40's Day, CPA and the USO. About to begin here in a matter of minutes. I think the, uh, the line is still somewhat long for lunch. 
So we will scan the room uh, just briefly, and you can see some of the folks who are in attendance. Again, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate the, your being with us today for this uh, eighth grade tradition at the academy. We have uh, everybody there. You see some of the students in their garb, period costumes. Certainly a lot has gone into making this a special day. Look at the flag over there, gigantic American flag on the far wall. That's beautiful. And I can't recall, honestly, uh, where that comes from, but it's been provided each year uh, for this event. I mentioned the star earlier. And down to our, you can see it right there at the top of the star in our shot. Now, some of the students over there, we'll kind of zoom in on them a little bit and give them a little bit of pre-stage attention. Whoops, sorry about that. Didn't mean to go that close. It's a little kink right there, but there's some of the students. Now we'll let you just enjoy some of the sounds of the band as we prepare for 40's Day in a few minutes. Remington is so powerful that it can shave the bristles off a brush. Bristles tougher than any beard. Remember the amazing demonstration of the peach and brush. For the close, comfortable shave you've always wanted, reach for the Remington electric shaver. Our, our audio feed is a bit more focused on some of the videos on the screen right there, so we'll enjoy some of those period videos as we prepare for 40s day. Stick with us. That's around shaving age. You give them pointers on personal appearance too? Yes. A boy has more self-respect when he's clean shaved. I tell him to use a Gillette razor, Al. You said it. The Gillette Super Speed Razor. And today there are three. Light for sensitive skin and most younger men. Regular for average skin and beard. Heavy for men who like the heft and feel of a heavier razor. Each is different, precisely engineered. One has the right blade edge exposure, edge angle, and weight to shave you in a breeze. Comfortable, good-looking shaves you may never have had before. And convenient, you change blades and rinse clean, so. Choose your Gillette Super Speed Razor. $1.29 with Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser in handy travel case. Now, now let's check the second message. Ready. Mum, the doctor's deodorant discovery now contains M3. Got that? M3 to stop odor 24 hours a day. Remember now. I know. For security reasons, mum's the word. New mum cream deodorant now with M3. Got the message? Susie Q, what's cooking with you? Your teeth look whiter than no, no, no. My teeth aren't new, but my toothpaste is new Pepsodent. Get with it, kids. New package, new flavor, new formula, too. Means brighter smile for me and you. You'll, You'll wonder, wonder where, where the yellow went, went when you brush your teeth, teeth with Pepsodent. Pepsodent. The new formula with IMP gets teeth much whiter. You can see it cleans the stains hey, girls, and film get your away places. while so hearing them and you can hear a little bit of backstage uh, conversation there. It was uh, either Kay or Carrie, I'm not sure what, which one, saying, hey, places, girls. That means the show is not long away. This is where I, I do a bold thing here and invite you, if you're watching this live, to uh, feel free to text me. I'm serious about this. You could text uh, the number 347-5163 uh, if you're in Nashville, 
3475163. Again, that's 615-347-5163. Uh, drop a text, and if you can hear and see us, let me know. Or if you can hear us but not see us, let me know that. Uh, just a quick uh, message would be appreciated if you don't mind. Just say, hey, we can hear you, we can see you, or uh, any issues or problems you might detect in the broadcast that we can try to address, feel free. Again, thank you for tuning in. This is 40's Day, CPA in the USO here at the Academy. Glad to have you along. For those who might be grandparents or a family out of town, we tell you it's uh, wonderful to, uh, to have you with us here at CPA where we have uh, preschool through 12th grade and over 1,200 students, about 1,220 or so students this academic year and high school building. We've been in the brand new high school building for now almost two years, our second year. Right now we're coming to you from the event center, which is also sometimes known as the uh, elementary middle school gymnasium in the elementary school building, first floor. It's a beautiful sunshiny day out there after a lot of rain yesterday. And this is a tradition I mentioned uh, at the outset, if you're tuning in uh, recently, we always want to give a shout out to our outstanding, wonderful, middle school principal, Mrs. Rhonda Smith. If you know Rhonda Smith, you know what a treasure she is as the leader of the middle school here. And then, of course, this production is led by uh, directors Kay Reed and Carrie Jennings, uh, stage program directors. Carrie also is the musical director. And Kay Reed and Shane Cottle wrote the script. Kay, outstanding script writer. Max Fullwater is the band director. You'll hear some of the band playing. Uh, today. Lisa Roman is the dance director. Damon Shefke is our technical director on the sound and oh my goodness I see there uh, Elliot Cherry with his little precious little baby down below. See if we can get a shot oh, while they left, the, they left the frame. Beautiful little one down there. I shouldn't even told you. And parent chairs. Melissa Hutz and uh, Mindy Anderson. Thanks again to those ladies for their tireless uh, behind the scenes work on this uh, production. If you were here, you'd see a, a lot of displays around. There are pictures of uh, CPA ancestors remembered from the 40s and artwork done by the students, uh, pictures, uh, antiques and props. That outside there are some convertible vehicles to help even uh, make the day that much more special, provided by Bellevue Cruisers uh, Convertible Club. Carolyn's cater Catering, providing the food. Jimmy Gentry as part of the, the day as well. And then all the students, we, were, we read through all those students a few minutes ago. Uh, every eighth grader has a part, an important part in this production. Students and today. parents, if I could have ah, your attention Mrs. Smith. just for a moment. I want to say welcome. What a fantastic event we have here today to celebrate um, the 1940s. And I made a comment to several parents walking in. I'm probably closer to the 40s than most of you in this room. So it's exciting to be here. You're going to really enjoy what your um, children have worked so hard to provide for you. We hope you love the food. Uh, most of all, we hope you love being with your the families of the students that are in this class, and it is an amazing class. Uh, my brother Bruce, who is, you cannot help but love a guy dressed in uniform, will open us with a word of prayer, and then he'll turn it over to Miss Reed. If you could bow with me, please. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are merciful, that you love us, that you sacrificed yourself for us. And Father, we thank you for CPA where we can, Lord Jesus, through the arts and through the talents that you've given these young men, men and women, Lord Jesus, glorify you. And Father, we just thank you for our country where we can be free and that we can praise your name in all different venues. And we thank you today for uh, the performance and we ask that your hand would be upon it, that you would let it run smoothly and that Lord Jesus, that it, it would go without a hitch. But Father, we thank you also for the food that you've provided that this food would strengthen us so that we may walk in your ways and do your will. And Lord Jesus, I ask for your anointing on each family here and over this time. And we just thank you for all the people who've put their time and effort in today. 
Uh, may you bless them as well. And may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, um, I, first of all, I'm Miss Reed, Kay Reed. Um, Carrie Jennings and I are the ones who um, directed this play that you're about to see. And I just want to say we have loved working with your children. It has been a joy from the moment that we posted the parts that they were going to have. There was so much exuberance over 40s Day coming up, and so it's just been a joy all the way through. Right now, I want to recognize a different group of people. If you have served in the military or if you have anyone in your family who has served in the military, please stand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your service and for your sacrifice. I have a brother who actually is going to be um, retiring from the military in the next year and has been in several wars. And so I know what that's like to have um, that sacrifice and watch someone go through that. Um, we have one person that I know is here who actually served during World War II. And I hope I get the last name right. This was just given to me, so. Um, Peter Zephyrus was in the 89th Infantry Division with General Patton's 3rd Army. The 89th Division was known as the Rolling W and participated in several major military battles. They first landed in France and quickly spearheaded into Germany. In the same month, they crossed several rivers and they overran Odruf, which is a subcamp of Buchenwald concentration camp. Odruf was the first Nazi concentration camp that was liberated by U.S. troops in Germany. He was awarded several um, awards, Combat Infantry Badge, Bronze Star, the African-European Campaign Ribbon with two combat stars, Army Occupation Ribbon, Good Conduct Ribbon, World War II Victory Ribbon, American Campaign Ribbon, and Battlefield Promotion to Sergeant. Um, and we would like to, I don't know where you are, but if you could stand just so we could recognize you. Thank you so much for your service. And now we're going to begin our show. So students, if you can make sure you're in our places and we're ready to go. Thanks for coming. Shout out to Mike Michaeloff, who's watching from Texas today. Thanks, Mike, for tuning in. I know Mike's daughter, Mike and Michelle's daughter, is in the play, which is about to begin. Here we go. <laughs>
stops to admire the scene. Rosie at work on the B19. She's never twittery, nervous, jittery. Rosie, the riveter when she's smeared with oil and grease. Doing her best for the old man lease. She keeps the gang around. They like to hang around. Rosie, the riveter. Rosie buys a lot of war bonds. That girl really has sense. Wishes she could purchase more bonds. Putting all her cash into the national defense. Senator Jones, who's in the know. Shy these words on the radio. Berlin will hear about Moscow. Cheer about Rosie. Of Tall Tex, he was searching for his one true love, Sweet Sally, just outside the train station. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1115 from Beaumont, Texas will be arriving shortly. Excuse me there, mister. I'm a wondering if you've seen my sweetheart. She's oh, about this tall with honey colored hair and the most beautiful blue eyes I've ever seen. Well, sir, I don't rightly recollect. Well, wait a minute. I might have seen her with a tall man wearing a black suit and a black hat. Black Bart, I had a run with him down in the mercantile and he was a threatening to do something serious. He's got sweet Sally. That's right, tall Tex, I win again. <laughs> Get back here, Black Bart, face me like a man. You'll never see me, and you'll never see your sweet Sally again. Get back here, you lily-livered coward, or I'll shoot you down. Why, Tall Tex, you run slower than a crippled turtle. Take your best shot. Help! Help me, Tex! Oh, help! <laughs> Black Bart then tied me to the train tracks. Save me! Oh no, here comes the train. I must save my sweet Sally. Help! Please help! Tune in next time to find out what happens. Will Tall Tex save sweet Sally? Will he catch that slippery villain, Black Bart? All this and more will be answered on the next episode of... Tall Tex, Hero of the West. We gotta wait a whole week to find out what happens. That tall tech sure is brave. Yeah, but not as brave as father. Father's a real hero. Hello, mother. I have the groceries. I was able to get almost everything on the list. Mr. Donaldson helped me with the ration book, but I couldn't get any sugar. Mrs. Donaldson says there's a shortage. That's quite all right, Susan. Don't worry. I've been conserving, and we'll have plenty for your birthday cake tomorrow. Thanks to that Victor garden you helped me plant, we'll have more than enough for a lovely birthday dinner. I sure wish that Paul could celebrate with me this year. It's not every day that girl turns 14. Oh, Susan, we'll make sure you have a swell birthday. Yes, dear. And I'm sure Father would love to be here as well. Why don't we turn on the radio? They're airing a special broadcast, and there's a good chance that Father will be listening too. In that way, perhaps we can be a bit closer. Oh, Mother, do you really think he'll be listening? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes, I do, Beverly. Come, let's listen in. Captain Dave.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we'd like to welcome all of you in our studio audience and also all those who are listening in on their radio sets all across the 48 great states. Tonight, we have a special treat for you. We're pleased to bring you an extra special edition of Mail Call. Each week, we send a special package of laughs, music, stories, and voices from home shipped directly to our men in uniform. While our brave boys in uniform overseas gather around in their mess halls and in barracks, you can gather around the family radio at home and share a few happy moments together despite the distance. We've put together a special show for you tonight loaded with special treats and extra special guests. And without further ado, our illustrious host and hostess for the first half of our evening, none other than that dashing dancer, Fred Astaire, and the beautiful and talented Barbara Stanwyck. Neither, and I say neither. Either, either, neither, neither. Let's call the whole thing off. You say potato, and I say potato. You say tomato, and I say tomato. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. But oh, if we call the whole thing off, then we must part. And oh, if we ever part, then that might break my heart. So if you like pajamas and I like pajamas, I'll wear pajamas and give up pajamas. For we know we need each other, so we better call the calling off off. Let's call the whole thing off. You say laughter and I say laughter. You say after and I say after. Laughter. Laughter. After. After. Let's call the whole thing off. You like vanilla and I like vanilla. You sarsaparilla and I sarsaparilla Vanilla, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry Let's call the whole thing off But oh, if we call the whole thing off Then we must part And oh, if we ever part Then that might break my heart So if you go for oysters and I go for oysters I'll go for oysters and cancel the oysters For we know we need each other So we better call the calling off off Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gents. Thank you all for joining us for this landmark event. Never before have so many celebrities and notable public figures gathered to pay homage to our troops. And that is certainly what we all are here for. That's right, Fred. To kick things off, we might have invited Mr. Walt Disney here for a special message for you. Thank you for all that you're doing over there to keep us safe back at home. We greatly appreciate your sacrifice and service. Now, here's a class lady I'm sure you all know, Miss Rosemary Clooney, with one of our award-winning songs, When You Wish Upon a Star, from Pinocchio. We are saying lots of prayers and wishing on the stars for your safe return. Oh 
from those soldiers who, who listen to this program. Well, sometimes you have to be brave to listen to this program. <laughs> oh, Fred, seriously. A lot of our soldiers do listen to this program, week after week. And we want you to know that we here on the home front are listening to you too. Just wait until you hear what we've cooked up for you tonight. Well, whatever it is, it's gotta be better than one co Uncle Sam's cooking up in the mess tent. Well, look who stopped by. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Hope. Hiya, Fred. How are you, Barbara? Now, I'm just kidding about that mess all food. Want all the mothers out here to know tonight that your son's dining on a fine home-cooked meal, a boot stroganoff, and potatoes all rotten. Oh, come now. You must mean beef stroganoff all rotten. Oh, do I? Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I must object. I'm conscious about the fact that... Well, who'd have thought that General MacArthur would be a conscientious objector? No, 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 Groucho. You know, you should be ashamed. You're the highest officer in the Atlantic. Pacific. Okay, I'll try and be more specific. You, General Douglas MacArthur? No, Groucho, I'm stationed in the Pacific, but I was objecting to Mr. Hope casting aspersions at the army cooks. The cooks? Try casting some aspersions at the soldiers. This the food so like it's making them seek. Aspersions, not aspirins. You say potato, he say potato, what do you say? Now listen here, I want to put the minds of our listeners to rest. If this sketch goes on much longer, you have done that. Now really, Groucho, I think what the general means to say is that he objects to the idea that army cooking is bad. The cooking is not too bad, it's the cooks that are bad. Now really, Chico, after all, an army travels on its stomach. Keep feeding them this stuff and they'll have to. That Harpo, always chasing the ladies. You know, fellas, we do take the time to read those cards and letters you send us every week. That's right, Fred. How about you read a little from the one from Captain Bill Davis? Bill? Father? Oh yes, here it is. We all want to be home with our little ones, our sweethearts, and our mothers. But we know what we're doing over here is so important, so we're just going to stay and fight till the job's done. Captain Davis, we all know you're doing an important job, and we couldn't be more appreciative. Just to show how much, we've called on America's sweetheart to come and sing a little something for you here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Judy Garland.
Thank you, Judy, for that beautiful song. Yes, that was lovely. Oh, it was my pleasure. I just wish I could be there to thank heroes like Captain Davis in person. Well now, ma'am, we'd be happy to shake his hand for you when we go back. That's right, we sure would, ma'am. It'd be an honor. Well, look who stopped by. Ladies and gentlemen, four of our more famous GIs, movie stars, Jimmy Stewart and Clark Gable. <laughs> Boxer, Joe Lewis and baseball player, Joe DiMaggio. Fred, you know we may have been celebrities before this war, but we just joined up to do our part just like everyone else. Not me, I joined up because I was itching for a good fight. Couldn't find a man to beat me here in the States, so I thought I'd take on the whole German army at once. I'm sure you keep them on their ropes, Joe. And Jimmy, you become a war hero as a highly decorated pilot. Well shucks, Miss Barbara. I'm just knocking some of them down to earth so the Joes here can knock them out for the count. And, and speaking of knockouts, here are three sisters who are a real knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the Andrew sisters. Every night, raise them up the same way in the early bright. They clap their hands. 
beautiful performance. And fellas, I bet when you come home, all these beautiful girls. Just one minute, Barbara. Yes, Barbara. Just what are you trying to say? Speaking of beautiful girls, look who it is. Katherine Hepburn and Marlene Dietrich. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Barbara, I hope you weren't implying that all we women do is sitting at home checking our makeup while our boys are fighting overseas. No, I was just... Just what, Barbara, darling? Were you about to tell the boys how their mothers and sisters are keeping the home fires burning over here? Like our friend Rosie the Riveter here. We are doing our part, working to keep the goods and equipment our boys overseas so desperately need rolling out of the factory. It's just like my poster says. We can do it. I do agree. Women are really stepping up to the plate. That's the truth. We're stepping up to the plate and knocking that ball right out of Wrigley Field. Look who it is. Maddie English from the Rossine Bells. <laughs> Professional women's baseball is very popular, Barbara. I'd like to see some of the men out there try and play 108 games in just under 90 days. And still keep that feminine mystique. Who does your hair, darling? I love it. Women are really stepping up to the military role. Like our friend Jackie Cochran, founder of the Women's Air Force Service Pilots. Mildred McAfee, director of the U.S. Naval Women's Reserve. And Colonel Obeta Kolb Hobby of the Women's Army Corps. The WASP have logged almost 60 million miles of cargo and test flights over here, while our male pilots are over there. Haven't we, ladies? We're doing our part. We're keeping the Navy afloat here in the United States while our men are overseas. We're pulling for victory. We're serving in the U.S. and all over the world. We're doing our all. And don't forget the nurses, like Colonel Ruby Bradley, doing their part overseas to help us win this war. We're fighting for our men on and off the battlefield. The need is great, right ladies? We're needed now. And all the ladies here on the home front are doing their part as well. We're recycling metals and fats and raising victory gardens. We're buying more bonds. I bet all these beautiful, hardworking, and intelligent ladies are making our boys in uniform very proud. Yes, we can. At ease, ladies. Thank you, Barbara. What a nice thing to say. Thank you, Mrs. Hepburn. Boys, we all know you're doing our part over there. Like Ms. Hepburn and Ms. Dietrich pointed out. And we just want to let you know that we're doing our part over here, too. Aren't we, folks? Now sit back and enjoy this little number, Don't Send Her the Apple Tree, by the Boswell Sisters. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me Till I come marching home Don't go walking down lover's lane with anyone else but me Anyone else but me Anyone else but me No, no, no Don't go walking down lover's lane with anyone else but me Till I come marching home I just got word from a guy loves to pet and it fits you to a T. So don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me till I come marching home. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, 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 not a single soul but me. No, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with
sit down under the apple tree, baby, just you and me. When I come marching Ladies and gentlemen, we are so pleased that you've chosen to listen to our broadcast today. We hope you've enjoyed all the great entertainment you've heard so far. For the second half of our broadcast tonight, we are pleased to welcome two new guests for the evening. The always radiant Miss Rita Hayworth and the funny man you all know and love, Mr. Danny Kay. The way you wear your hat you sip your tea The memory of all that No, no, they can't take that away from me The way your smile just beams The way you sing all the The way you haunt my dream No, no, they can't take that away we may never, never, never meet again on that bumpy road to love. But I'll always, always keep that memory up, yeah. And the way you hold your knife. The way we dance till three. The way you changed my life. Take that away from me. No, no, they can't take that away from me. And I are thrilled to be your host for the rest of the show. And don't you worry, Fred and Barbara will be back to join us before we close up the mailbag. You know, Danny, I was just thinking about some of those women baseball players we just saw. Well, it's Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. How's it going, Danny and Rita? Say, Bud, what was it you were saying about uh, baseball players? Well, those women baseball players reminded me of a game I went to before the war started. You know, it seems to me that they give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. Uh, you mean funny names? Uh, strange names, pet names, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. So the first baseman's name? Who? First baseman. Who? The guy playing. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. <laughs> That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? Yes. <laughs> you got a first baseman? Certainly. Who's playing first? That's right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? He, he does. Uh, every dollar of it. 
Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? N no, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? <laughs> One base at a time. Well, don't change the players around. I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy, buddy. <laughs> All I want to know is what's the guy on first base? Wh who's on first? I don't know. He he's on third. We're not talking about him. How did I get on third base? Why, you mentioned his name. If I mentioned the third baseman's name, who did I say he's playing third? But no, who's playing first? <laughs> Look, you got an outfield? Sure. The left fielder's name? Why? I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Then tell me who's playing left field. Who's playing first? I, I'm not staying on the infield. I want to know what's the guy's name in left field. No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> the, the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. You, you got a pitcher on this team? Sure. The pitcher's name? Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? Uh, I'm telling you now. Then go ahead. Tomorrow. <laughs> Look, all I want to know is what's the pitcher's name? What is on second? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> what funny men. I just love watching Abbott and Costello. And now here's a special message from one of Hollywood's finest leading ladies, Miss Betty Davis. Christmas! Good morning, sweethearts. Merry Christmas, Mother. Merry Christmas, children. Mother, Merry... where are our presents? It is Christmas, isn't it? Yes, children, it is Christmas. Come sit down a moment. June, Jenny, these are for you. Thank, thank you. Jack, this is for you. It's Mother's Christmas present to you. Uh, thank you, Mother. War bonds? But I wanted a new doll. I know you did, sweetheart. And I know Jack wanted a new bicycle. But I think you're all old enough to realize that your country's at war. And you need to be willing to make sacrifices. Sacrifices? Just think, if Daddy was wounded, one single war stamp might pay for the medicine that would save him from pain, maybe even save his life. But couldn't I have a bond and a bicycle? <laughs> yes, Jack, you could. We could afford that. But if everybody bought everything they wanted, it would take thousands of people to make all those goods and to sell them. And those people are needed to make essential things for the war. Don't you see? Maybe next year? Maybe, Jenny. I know that's one thing your father is fighting for, so that we can celebrate future Christmases in peace. And that would mean he'd be with us again. You'd like that, wouldn't you, children? We sure would. Oh, of course, Mother. Now run along to the kitchen. Mother has a special Christmas breakfast ready for you. Yum! Oh, thank you, Mother. Oh, Mother, I hope Father is having a good breakfast for Christmas, too. I do, too. Now run along. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Betty Davis. You know, I think the mother in the little scene I just played for you is right. Any bond that you and I give as a gift is much more than a present. It is a special blessing to men who are far away, men who may be under fire right now. It is a special gift of appreciation from us to them for the incredible sacrifices that they are making. It is a gift for their future and ours. Thank you. Well, that's right, folks. War bonds keep the war effort moving forward. The war bonds you buy keep our soldiers outfitted and our sailors afloat. Those bonds provide medicine, keep our boys well fed, and give them a comfortable place to lay down their heads at night and dream of better days and coming home to you. Coming up next, we have a wonderful singer ready to knock your socks off with the great song, I Only Have Eyes For You. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> All the stars out tonight I don't know if it's cloudy or bright Cause I only have eyes for you Dear, the moon may be high But I can't 
can't see a thing in the sky Cause I only have eyes for you I don't know if we're in a garden Or on some crowded avenue You are here, so am I Maybe millions of people go by But they all disappear from you song with us, Frankie. My pleasure. And let me just say, we're all dreaming of the day that the Warrens and all our boys can come on back home. We sure are. Why don't we pause and read a letter from one of our brave men in uniform? Danny? This one's from Corporal Walter Dean of Cincinnati, Ohio. You know, the worst thing about being way out here in the Pacific is just feeling so out of touch with what's going on at home. By the time we get movie reels and news, it's already ancient history. Well, Corporal Dean, we can't speed up the delivery system for you, but we'll keep on featuring the latest movie stars on our show each week until those reels get to you. Which at this rate should be just six weeks after the end of the war. Let's hope not, sweetheart. Well, look who just dropped by. Movie stars Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. And that beloved cowboy and his sweetheart on the real life and in silver screen, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Howdy, Danny. Just wanted to drop in and say how proud we are of all them boys out there. We sure are, fellas. We're just itching to see your handsome faces again. Yes, sir. We're praying that the good Lord above to keep y'all out of harm's way and bring you out victoriously. And we're all waiting to give you a great big hug of thanks when you get home. Let's win this war and get you back home. I'm tired of having to wait years to talk about how my movies end. Well, Bogey, I'm sure they'll do their best for you. Be safe, boys. Let's pause for a word from the War Department. We'd like to take a moment to talk to all the ladies out there listening in on the home front. You know, ladies, in a time of war, spending as usual is just as bad as going on with our business as usual. We can't buy all we want and still give our fighting men all they must have to survive. Each and every one of us is just as deeply involved in this war as our soldiers at the front lines and out on the seas. This is our fight too, and we've got to think we're an act war in our daily lives. Now we're not suggesting that we dress up as men and try to enlist. We're enlisted already, and we have an important part to play here at home. We can help by cutting back on our consumption of beef, butter, canned goods, and other luxury items, and saving and recycling valuable materials. 
But there's something else we can do to help the war effort. We can buy war bonds. Nearly 10 million Americans are buying war bonds, but with the war costing $120 million every day, well, you can see we need to buy a lot more war bonds than that. In fact, that means we need to purchase almost 1 billion war bonds every month. Now, I know this sounds like a lot, but if we also decide 10% of our weekly income, we can make it happen. Our husbands and sons are giving their safety and even their lives, fighting to bring peace and stability to our nation. Is it so much for us to give 10% and fight to bring them home safe and victorious? This is our fight, too. The women of America are declaring war on Germany. We, we are buying war bonds. And now here's a little treat for you boys. Benny Goodman's orchestra playing in favorite from 1937. Sing, sing, We've been reading letters from so many of you cooped up in tight barracks. Or tinned in like sardines on your ship berths. No one likes to be cooped up all the time. Why, it's almost un-American. Well, you can't get more personal space than in outer space, so here's a little song to help improve your mood just a bit. We've enlisted the help of none other than that sensational crooner himself, Mr. Bing Crosby, to sing a little song for all of you. Would you like to swing on a star, carry moonbeams home in a jar, and be better off than you are? Or would you rather be a mule? A mule is an animal with long funny ears, kicks up at anything he hears. His back is brawny, but his brain is weak. He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak. And by the way, if you hate to go to school, you may grow up to be a mule Or would you like to swing on a star Carry moonbeams home in a jar And be better off than you are Or would you rather be a pig A pig is an animal with dirt on his face His shoes are a terrible disgrace He has no manners when he eats his food He's fat and lazy and extremely rude But if you don't care a feather or a fig You may grow up to be a pig Or would you like to swing on a star Carry moonbeams home in a jar And be better off than you are Or would you rather be a fish A fish won't do anything but swim in a book He can't write his name or read a book to fool the people is his only thought And though he's slippery, he still gets caught But if that sort of life is what you wish You may grow up to be a fish And all the monkeys are in the zoo Every day you'll meet quite a few So you see, it's all to you You can be better than you are You could be 
We're all pulling for you, boys. Be safe and keep your heads down so you can all come back home. Well, boys, we've had a great time pulling this little shindig together for you. Boys, before we close up the mailbag, there's someone else who wanted to send a little note your way, and, well, we just couldn't refuse. So straight from the Broadway stage is Miss Ethel Merman and a couple of her friends singing You Can't Get a Man with a Gun. I shine like the morning sun But I lose all my luster When with the Bronco Buster No, you can't get a man with a gun With a gun, with a gun No, you can't get a man with a gun I went to battle with someone's herd of cattle have stake when the job was done. But if I shot the herder, they'd holler bloody murder. No, you can't shoot a man in the tail like a quail. No, you can't get a man with a gun. wonderful performance. Well, boys, before we close up the mailbag, there's someone else who wanted to send a note your way, and we couldn't refuse. So here he is tonight, straight from Washington, D.C., via transcontinental broadcast, your commander-in-chief, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. This nation in the past two years has become an active partner in the world's greatest war against human slavery. We have joined with like-minded people in order to defend ourselves in a world that has been gravely threatened by gangster rule. But I do not think any of us Americans can be content with mere survival. Sacrifices that we and our allies are making imposed upon all of us 
a sacred obligation to see to it that out of this war, we and our children will gain something greater than mere survival. I've often said that there are no two fronts for America in this war. There is only one front. There is one line of unity which extends through the hearts of the people at home to the men of our attacking forces and our farthest outposts. When we speak of our total effort, we speak of the factory and the field and the mine as well as the battleground. We speak of the soldier and the civilian, the citizen and his government. Each and every one of us has a solemn obligation under God to serve this nation in the most critical hour, to keep this nation great, to make this nation greater and a better world. Thank you, President Roosevelt, for those inspiring words. It really is important to remember that we're all working together to make our world a better place. Well, we're just about to wrap things up, but before we do, someone else wanted to sing a little song for you. Miss Dinah Shore sharing a sentiment we all feel when we remember those we love and miss. That's our show, folks. Remember, boys, keep on sending us those letters, and we'll keep opening up the mailbag for you each week until it's all over over there. Let's invite Fred and Barbara back out to help us close the show. Once again, everyone, Fred Astaire and Barbara Stanwyck. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so much. And how about Danny Kaye and Rita Hayworth, everybody? Weren't they just dandy? And now we invite all of you in your homes and barracks and mess halls 
to stand and join with us as we sing Mr. Irving Berlin's anthem to this country we all love so much, God Bless America. Okay, um, I want everybody to look around at this beautiful theater that's been decorated. Give it one quick look. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. Well, we've had uh, tons of moms come through and just decorate it and make it look as beautiful as it has. I've never seen CPA's theater look quite like this, and it's absolutely fantastic. So thank you all the moms that worked on this. And uh, in particularly, uh, Miss Anderson and Miss Hutz, they stepped up and they chaired the decorations. And so if you could come up here. Miss Hutz and Miss Anderson, yes. And also we have Miss Roman and Mr. Fullwider. And Miss Roman choreographed all the dancing and she's fabulous and everyone loves her. And Mr. Fullwider put together all of the band stuff and they sounded amazing and we just wanted to thank them. So y'all could come up here. Also, the eighth grade would like to thank two special ladies who have put in so much time, effort, and commitment to making 40s Day as wonderful it is, it, as it is. Ms. Rita, Ms. Jennings. <laughs> Ms. Reed. Okay, God bless America. Thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed 40s Day. I think that's it. Thank you. Bye. That does it for us, too. Thanks so much for tuning in to the broadcast of 40s Day today. I hope you enjoyed that. Outstanding performances by all the 8th grade students, uh, led by, as you heard, some of those folks who were thanked including, of course, uh, Mrs. Rhonda Smith, our principal of middle school, and all the other faculty and staff involved in this production. Thanks so much. This is Phil Newman signing off from CPA, and uh, we'll see you back at the Academy real soon. By the way, if you're watching live, we have basketball tonight at 7 o'clock. The girls play uh, against Good Pasture uh, at 7 p.m. in the Region 5 quarterfinal game from CPA. If you're in town, come on by and watch the game. 
live. Uh, the boys play tomorrow night at 7, so tune in for that broadcast as well, or we'll see you in the gym. Thanks again, and goodbye.